Natalia has responded to reports of backstage heat in WWE. Matt Jackson was hurt during the Fighter Fest match on Wednesday night, and we've got an injury update on Adam Cole, so stay tuned. Right, it's all been kicking off with Natalia following that no sale in her match at a house show with Liv Morgan. Uh, Liv hits her finish, pins her one, two, three, and then Natalia just hops up. Yeah. Apparently just... goes, thank you. And, and then, then go, go, goes. Off. And people are kicking off. Ringside News released a report which has since been debunked by Natalia, or Natalia's people, anyway. We'll get to that in a second. The original report from Ringside News said that Ringside News was told that Natalia has developed a reputation for being more. Uh, more and more of a problem with producers and writers. There's a lot more to this story other than just her no-selling Liv Morgan's finisher at that live event. A tenured member of the writing team told Ringside News that Natty was a serious problem backstage last Friday, so bad that several producers and writers were talking about whether they go straight to Vince McMahon, observe protocol, and go to Bruce Pritchard instead. Since Laurinaitis is gone, this was a real question. Uh, they've also considered going to TJ Wilson as a courtesy and see if he can get involved since she's being so unprofessional and harassing the writers and producers. We were told that Natalia's complaining that she gets her role and understands what's needed, but she's treated like a jobber. Natty kept pushing for answers, but then when she gets in front of Vince McMahon, um, she baby faces Vince and does the old, I'm grateful for the opportunity, I'm fortunate to be here for so long routine. So that was the original report. Natalia has taken to Twitter. I say Natalia, mm. actually, it's Bob. <laughs> Bob Real has life taken Bob. to it from Natalia's Twitter account, uh, writing, This is Bob! <laughs> Bloody hell, Bob! <laughs> Natalia's assistant is Bob! This is Bob! Natalia's assistant, your article is complete S-word. Completely tearing it apart. Quote tweet in Ringside News mm -hmm. and the article that we just mentioned. Um, apologies for not putting Bob <laughs> response to backstage heat reports in the title. <laughs> well, they're, 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 I, I feel bad for that, but I'm not sure people would fully understand. But Bob has responded. Mm. He's obviously speaking on behalf of Natalia, who I'd assume has okayed that message. What do you make of it, Andrew? Um, it just all seems so convoluted, doesn't it? With the hearsay here and there. Um, but I will say this, right? Natty only brings out Bob when it's when it's a very <laughs> serious situation and things need to get cleared up. Um, I'm not really I'm not really sure what to make of this. What about yourself? I don't believe it. I'm not like a big Natalia fan yeah. by any means. Uh, I think she 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 like she plays her role adequately. Yeah, She's fine. Definitely. I can't remember the last time that I was invested in really much that she did. Mm. Um, but I've never heard anything about her being difficult to work with backstage. It was a curious incident, and I'm still not really sure what to make of that. It was odd. It was. I mean, it was very odd. I guess with what happened at Money in the Bank. That could kind of tie into some sort of storyline there. You know, Natalia does, as it, we saw on SmackDown as well, Natalia's like, I did most of the work anyway, so you picked up the championship pretty easily, Liv Morgan. So I could see perhaps something like that being involved, but then why would you do it on a live show, right? Like a storyline thing I guess that could... Maybe because they know that people are talking about it. I guess, it, it, actually... Like if, if this does evolve into a storyline, or if this is the beginning, of a storyline, mm. then actually it could be quite interesting. The angry vet who feels that she's not being treated fairly, that she's given so much to the company, yeah. there's actually something that they could do with that. I don't know how based in reality that is. My assumption is not very. Because... But you can make it feel as though it yeah. is by doing it at live events, right? Where it's not where people are just taking it on their phones. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's more in the moment, more of a, a shoot, I guess. Exactly. Shoot themselves into a work. Brother. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, we'll keep you updated on Bob. Who do you reckon Bob is? Bob Holly? Yes. Monkhouse. It's got to be. No, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Monkhouse. Bob Odenkirk. Who? The man who plays uh, Saul in uh, Breaking Bad. Next up, Matt what? Jackson has suffered. Uh, well, he's been he's been hurt in the Triple or Nothing match. It's another. It's not another AEW injury because it doesn't sound that bad. Mm. But according to Meltzer, Wrestling Observer this morning, uh, Matt Jackson suffering a stinger early on in that Triple or Nothing match. If you've not watched it yet, it's absolutely bonkers. The result was fantastic. Hard to follow. People are tearing it apart a little bit now mm. uh, because apparently the, the Matt Jackson, was it Matt that got the, 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 that was I think, pinned? I think it was, uh, yes. I think I it think was so. Matt that got pinned. Yeah. Uh, wasn't the legal man. 
It was pandemonium. I mean, all Young Bucks matches are, but apparently I, the person who the got end. pinned wasn't the legal man. Yes. And some are saying that that's taken away from Swerve and Keith's big mm. win. Um, anyway, the report states from Meltzer here. The injury was about four minutes into the match, and we were told it was a basic spot where Hobbs and Lee gave him a double vertical suplex after he tried to do his Northern Lights suplex on two guys at once. Except those guys are a lot bigger than the guys he usually do does the move on. Well, one of them is, anyway. Yeah. Uh, he continued on in the match, but worked carefully. You could see him holding his neck in the latter stages of the match. He's had neck is issues for years from the style that he wrestles in and injured it, taking a crazy-looking Canadian destroyer out of nowhere by Penta, not in the match that we were talking about there obviously but in Ontario a few months earlier he did say fortunately good news here he was okay from the mm. stinger and feeling a lot better the next day it shows you how easy it is to do because I didn't even know so I did see him holding his neck at one point yeah definitely um, I did I did see that but it wasn't like a big spot or anything that he it, did it it's so it easily done it's so easily done and I mean he absolutely just kept going as well because I didn't even I saw him holding his neck and, and everything but I didn't kind of noticed that he was in any sort of visible, you know, like actual pain or, yeah. or whatnot. And he just continued on like nothing. So what, I mean, what an absolute professional boy. Well, it's good to hear that he's feeling better the yeah. morning after. We don't know if he's expected to miss any ring time at all. Mm. Not a clue, but we'll keep you updated on that as well. We've got the sort of reason for the um, the Swerve and Keith win here. Once again, from the Observer, Andrew, what's he saying? Uh, he said the match was to elevate both Lee and Strickland and Hobbs and Starks to the level with the Young Bucks, Lucha Brothers and FTR as the big five tag teams now that Santana and Ortiz, Santana's injury, the Hardys and Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy are no longer teaming together. The plan was always to get the belts on Lee and Strickland with the tease breakup spots to make it more of a surprise. When Jeff Hardy had his issue with the Young Bucks and, uh, uh, sorry, when Jeff Hardy had his issues and the Young Bucks got the tag titles, necessarily since it was the Christian turn on Jungle Boy plan, they were set to immediately lose to Lee and Strickland. Which is quite, um, I mean, they were teasing this for a very long time. Adam. The breakup. The, yeah, between the two. Because obviously we saw um, the uh, Battle Royals and whatnot. Mm. We saw, um, I think, Strickland eliminate Keith Lee. And it was like, oh, what's going to go on here now? I really did think that maybe they would break up. I'm glad that they haven't. Because yeah, I think too. they're going to be great tag champs. Mm. Apparently the reason behind that all is... Um, they're going to go with the Shaq Kobe idea yes. uh, of the large, charismatic, upbeat guy with the other superstar on the team that doesn't always get along. Apparently, it's a very intentional mm. thing, and this all, all of the teasers were there to make people doubt the fact that they would go on to win the titles. They've done that now. Grand. I'm happy about this as well because the we, we talk about sort of in the top spots of the title picture, people often get rotated out and it's quite often the same people that we see over and over again. And, do, and sorry, AEW seem to be and have always seemed to have had a lot of stock in their tag team division. Mm -hmm. And to see them continue this too, Hobbs and... Uh, Hobbs and um, it's gone out of my mind now. Hobbs and Ricky Stark, sorry, have been on the up and up for a few months now. I think they were almost some of the favorites to win this match, especially by what it sounded like the, the crowd was really behind oh, them and yeah, everything. Oh yeah, for sure. I think um, it's good to build more tag teams up and then to see a lot of those go off to go against, you know, your, your Pentas and your um, uh, Ray Phoenixes and your FTRs. Those are matchups that I really want to see, and I'm glad that they've put stock in this and they haven't necessarily just broken this tag team up just because. It's good, isn't it? It's quite yeah. clever. The teasing the heel turn to make the title win a surprise. Mm. I think it worked, and looking forward to seeing how the reign progresses. Next up, a quick Adam Cole injury update. Obviously, Adam Cole out of action at the moment. Um, from Meltzer again, Adam Cole is opting not to have surgery. Um, he's doing therapy for his injury instead. The time frame for his return is based more on the recovery from the concussion that he suffered, but also a nice positive update here. We're told he's faring better in that regard. Very Looking happy. forward to seeing him back Definitely. very much indeed. And we are finishing off with a quick update on Io Shirai, who has been in the news a lot lately, of course. She'd been injured, not used in months, but has been back training at the Performance Center lately. Those who knew her from Japan said that she went to WWE with the goal of making the main roster and believed that she would stay with a main roster deal. We mm. haven't heard anything about her signing a new deal this week after checking, but there's an offer on the table and her current deal hasn't expired yet. At this point, 
Um, just a bit of input here, really, an opinion. She should really be on the main roster as she's better than most on it right now, says Dave. He's a big fan. Yeah. It's just dry. It's spot on. I mean, he's absolutely spot on. I think me and Tom were talking about this earlier in the week, and I think she'd be so good. She'd be a breath of fresh air, I think, on the main roster, especially within the women's division, because a lot of them aren't as high flying. Not, you know, they don't sort of, they stick very much, they're very much grounded wrestlers mm -hmm. uh, almost. And I think Io Shirai's moveset is something that could mix things up a little bit and also work as a nice contrast to what we see quite a bit in the women's division too. Agree, yeah, something mm. a little bit different. Yeah. I mean, she's a star, obviously. She we don't is. sit here and blab on about how good Io no. is. And it's, it's bonkers that she's not main roster already, really. D absolutely, yeah. Especially after her NXT women's title reign as well. I thought she'd just be a shoe into straight That's it, she's up. done it all there. Yeah. yeah, just thought she'd have been there by now. So maybe, maybe if they offer her something juicy mm -hmm. on the main roster, she'll stick around. We will keep you updated. That's it for your news today, unless something absolutely bonkers happens. Like it did last week uh, yep <laughs> you might have another four news video day but that's it we got loads of stuff coming up this weekend including this guy right here with the third installment of lost wrestling media yeah. what's going down uh uh, can I tell them what's going down? Yeah. Am I allowed? Mm -hmm. It's about the uh, Lost Bret Hart documentary that was going to be made, but then got scrapped because Vince and Bret started kissing. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. A Bret Hart hit job. How he, hit, hit job. Piece. Definitely it, is it, it, was, it was a documentary that was produced. You'll hear all about it on Sunday yeah. anyway. Thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend. Take care of yourselves. See ya!